that, uh, talking about the block parties and the people that attend them and what we had them for. Uh, I looked at parks and recreation and public property as recreation is a quality of life issue. I've always said that. I, I will stick to my guns on that. I think the city is obligated to give the city and the residents uh, opportunities to come down, socialize, recreate, have different programs. Now, obviously, you're pushing for a maintenance department. That's what you're going to see because of the economic uh, crisis we're in. We are cutting back on a lot of those programs. But I can tell you this, it's going to end up being a maintenance uh, department. There's going to be people on the street with nothing to do. And that's the situation. That's a sad situation in my opinion. I think the city is obligated to offer programs to their residents. And yet we may look, have to look at all our funding. But just to say these aren't you know, good programs, I strongly disagree. I think there's probably a few thousand people in this city that may have the opposite view of you on those black points. So I, I do take your comments, you know, and, and, and listen to them. And I just, we can agree to disagree. But I think the city does have an obligation. And it's going to be interesting to hear uh, sometime next year uh, when people stand up and talk about need opportunities for people to have fun and do different things in the city of Millville. So I'll, I'll be interested to see the platforms people take about talking about recreation and quality of life. <coughs> I will be there to correct them on that. Thank well, you. thank you, Tim. I think the, the good story of this all is I am optimistic, and I think Val Harris is too, that the UAZ fund yeah. will be able to be used so that we can. As Tim said, and I, I know many of people enjoy a lot of the block parties and the movie and things like that on the riverfront, but it's nice to be able to be paying it and uh, I think, Bob, you pointed out some of the people who are enjoying those services may not have been noble residents, but the nice thing about it is if the UEC is paying for it, many of the people who contributed to our UEC also want to noble residents. So it's a win-win if we can get the UEC to do it, and we can still keep quality of life for those who enjoy going to the block parties. But uh, anyway, I think that's I think John, yeah. might as well put some, add something into it, Mayor. You know, we're not just looking at this budget, putting it through voting on it. It's our next meeting. Uh, the, the, the uh, we're already working on the next year's budget. We're uh, trying to consolidate meeting with department heads. We're going to meet today uh, with a number of our department heads and we're expressing to them that uh, you know, we just have to keep looking for cuts in our budgets. So we don't just put this budget today. We are, in fact, working on the next year's budget already to try to save some money. There's something happening very shortly, Mr. Mayor. I think you know, we have the election coming up in the presidential year. But I think one of the important things before the presidential year coming up is the World Series. Go Phillies, beat Tampa. Great point. Okay. <laughs> we'll all agree on that. Yes, please. Yeah, one final comment. I'm sitting here thinking, like, I don't want people to sit up all night and worry to death that we haven't. 12%, $8 million mistake. Uh, speaking as an accountant, uh, I would have to say that the world's worst auditor would conclude that one mistake that might have been found would automatically flow through an entire budget process. So sleep well tonight, people. It's not an $8 million mistake. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn.